All right, guys, today we're going to be speaking about menstrual cycle implications for training and nutrition, obviously for females. Now, whether you're a female who does your own training and nutrition or you're a coach who coaches females and you know, prescribe certain training and nutrition strategies, hopefully this video will be of some use. Now, the main difference between the physiology of males and females is the menstrual cycle. So the reason females get a menstrual cycle is to prepare them for pregnancy. Now this fact does have implications for training nutrition which we need to be aware of and which may allow us to further optimize our training and nutrition response. Now, first off, what we need to understand is that there really is no normal you know, cycle length. There's lots of variants, okay? But the average menstrual cycle is going to last 28 days. And the first day is marked by the onset of menstruation. So, uh, more colloquially known as when a female gets her period, okay? That is the first day of the, on average, 28-day cycle. Now, if we split this cycle up into two phases, we see that there is a so-called follicular phase, okay, that makes up the first 14-ish days of the menstrual cycle, and then the second phase is the luteal phase. Now, the hormonal environment within these two phases is completely different, okay, and this is what we need to understand, okay, the, the hormones, okay, the hormone fluctuations have a widespread effect on the body and this is what truly matters when we're speaking about training and nutrition. So to give you guys a quick rundown, females have two primary reproductive hormones, okay, estrogen and progesterone. Now males also produce these hormones to some extent but it's very, very minimal, especially when compared to females. Okay, and these two hormones, they have a large uh, degree of control over the female's physiology. And like I said, they have effects essentially all over the body. Now, in the follicular phase, we see estrogen dominance. Okay, so progesterone is quite low throughout this phase, and estrogen is uh, rising as the, the first 14 days unfold. Now, in the luteal phase, the roles are slightly reversed. So, progesterone surges, okay, and estrogen stays at a moderate level. Now, these hormones essentially have opposing effects on the body. So, I'm going to start off by describing what estrogen does, and then we can speak about progesterone. So, estrogen increases insulin sensitivity. And what this means is your body is better able to tolerate carbohydrates and make use of carbohydrates. Okay, that's a positive from a nutrition perspective. Estrogen also has what we call, or uh, it has what we call a net uh, excitatory effect on the nervous system, which means it can help improve your ability to produce force. Because remember, force production is predominantly um, being instigated by the nervous system, by your brain, okay? Estrogen also has many anabolic effects, which means it's quite conducive to building muscle. It can increase muscle protein synthesis, uh, improve recovery rates, and even uh, reduce muscle damage. The final thing I wanna say about estrogen here is that it can also influence hunger through certain hormones like dopamine. Okay, so when dopamine is regulated quite well, you may be less likely to crave certain foods which may give you that hit of dopamine, dopamine which you seek. Now, on the other hand, we have progesterone. So progesterone essentially has the complete opposite effect of estrogen. So it decreases insulin sensitivity, it can actually downregulate force production, it has catabolic effects on the body's physiology, it can even blunt testosterone. Now females do produce some testosterone, it's not much, but they produce some and that can help training and the fact that progesterone blunts that isn't a good thing from a training standpoint. And progesterone can also exacerbate hunger Okay, and interestingly, it leads to an increase in body temperature and potentially resting metabolic rate. And a lot of females pick up on this, okay? They start feeling hotter uh, when their period is getting closer. And this can increase energy expenditure, but usually this effect is counteracted 
by the increased cravings and hunger, which usually lead to a greater calorie intake throughout that period of time. And research shows that calorie intake on average for females is higher throughout the luteal phase. Now, the last thing I wanna say about progesterone is that it does induce most of the PMS symptoms, okay, which females uh, feel when, when they get their period or before their period, and water retention may also be experienced throughout this time. So based on those descriptions, these, you know, th these descriptions that I've given for both hormones, we can see that the two different phases of the menstrual cycle come with completely different effects that, you know, at first glance do have an impact on training and nutrition. And we need to account for that to some extent. Now, it can get a little bit tricky to account for every single one of these effects, okay? But there are some things that we can put into place to try and improve our training nutrition throughout, you know, the cycle. Now, the first thing that I recommend is actually tracking your cycle and paying attention to how you feel throughout different periods of the month. Whether you know, you're a female who does your own training, you, know, you can easily track it. Whether you're a coach who you know, coaches a female, you can track it on an Excel spreadsheet. It's not that hard to do. And the reason I, 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 I um, recommend paying attention to how you feel is because there is huge variance in how females feel, okay? throughout the menstrual cycle, how they get impacted by the menstrual cycle, and the symptoms that they feel throughout the cycle itself. Okay, there, there is great, a great degree of variance from female to female. And really, anything that you implement from a training and nutrition perspective needs to be individualized based on this subjective feedback. Okay, there is no blanket rule that each female should follow based on the description of the hormones that I gave. Okay, like I said, some females will respond very differently uh, to others. It is a matter of gathering a better understanding of how your body works and then implementing training and nutrition strategies based on that. So the second thing that I recommend is trying to prioritize hard training throughout the follicular phase. Okay, and this really isn't that hard to do. Okay, it's just a matter of increasing load or effort or slightly volume, okay, and just trying to increase the productiveness of the training throughout this time. Okay, when you take into account that a female is generally going to be more fatigue resistant than a male, and that the follicular phase is when they are primed to train hard due to estrogen's anabolic effects, well, it makes sense that training productiveness should see a rise throughout this time. Okay, and we just need to understand here that the more variables we change, the trickier it kind of gets to manage. So I recommend keeping it simple, just finding one way to make training more productive and using it throughout the follicular phase. Now, on the other hand, you know, during the luteal phase, that is a time for more prominent light days or potentially even deloads to mitigate the effects of progesterone on training, which can be slightly detrimental. The third thing that I recommend here is to auto-regulate the plan. Don't be afraid of auto-regulation, okay? And what auto-regulation means is just quite simply adjusting variables based on performance, recovery, and readiness to train, okay? Adjusting variables reactively, okay? So you might have a certain plan in place, okay? But you might change it based on how you uh, feel you know before your training session or how you performed in the last session okay so the plan that you have should be subject to change based on how you are feeling that's auto regulation okay and like I said earlier there is lots of variance between female to female but also lots of variance within a female herself and this is why auto regulation is important okay for example each cycle that one female may have we could could bring upon different effects, different PMS symptoms, could be more aggressive than other, other cycles in its effects um, on the body. And this is why auto-regulation is important. So the last thing I want to mention is that if your goal is fat loss, then utilizing a maintenance period or a diet break through, towards the end of the luteal phase or within the period, you know, throughout menstruation may be a good idea. Okay, this will limit the individual's chances of overeating because I remember I mentioned earlier that hunger and cravings are usually high throughout this time. And although it might slow down fat loss slightly, 
okay, it will lead to greater sustainability and may also help with training throughout this time, which I also mentioned earlier, may be impacted by the effects of progesterone. So don't be afraid to implement a diet break or a maintenance period uh, throughout that time, even if your goal is fat loss, okay? Slowing your fat loss down uh, may be better than, you know, suffering uh, at the hand of certain hormones that lead to greater uh, cravings and hunger and then actually ending up uh, overeating. So guys, that's uh, all that I had planned for today. Hopefully those uh, tips and those uh, strategies that I just outlined will help you uh, with your training and nutrition and hopefully you have a better understanding of the menstrual cycle and its effects on the female body. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.